Hey everyone, my name is Yaro and you're listening to the Embodied Business Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. This topic for today is so close to my heart and I'm really excited to record a short but hopefully really interesting episode for you. So you might have already noticed I renamed the podcast, which I think has been coming for a while. I just kind of felt a little bit too lazy <laughs> around updating the name across the different platforms. But the time has come. That just feels true. Um, I think embodiment is really important to me in all the work that I do. And the longer I grow this business, the more I realize how much my body really is such a beautiful mentor in my exploration and my projects and and how I navigate all these questions of ethics and authenticity and growth um so yeah that just felt good and made sense thank you for coming along on that journey a few more updates I have a little bit of space this month which feels really beautiful I broke my leg on New Year's Eve um at the beginning of the year and so in January and February I was mainly just healing and doing a few projects that I had already committed to and now in March something has been rescheduled. I'm having much more spaciousness and really sitting with that in my business and thinking about okay spring is coming, what kind of seeds do I really want to plant and how do I want to prepare my soil and how can I rest even more to heal my leg and yeah, there's just this sense, I think, of having been in the pandemic for a year now and having had all this time by myself to reflect and also spending a lot of time in community on Zoom and taking stock in a way and thinking about how I want to set myself up in the long term. So I'm going through my systems again. I'm looking at absolutely everything in my business and my house in a very Marie Kondo kind of way of really holding everything in my hands and deciding if it gives me joy or not and letting it go if it doesn't or you know at least receiving support and dealing with it if it has to be dealt with and anyway I'll, I'll go into that more but first I want to announce that one of the things that I've updated as I was touching it was my workbook um, which is free and it's called Our Bodies as Anti-Capitalist Business Mentors I wrote that last year in February, so just before, no, actually, I think in March, so at the beginning of the pandemic anyway, and it came out of a series of Instagram posts on our bodies as business mentors that people really loved, so I put all these thoughts together, it's 30 pages, it looks much better now, it's beautifully designed, it has a lot of interactive invitations to practice, and you can download that at yarrowdigital.com. And the other update that's also free is that on April 13th, I'm running a workshop on creating a beautiful website and how to get started thinking about branding and software and what to use and how to research color palettes and how to get into the right mindset to write your copy and all that kind of stuff. So that's also something you can join um, under the free tab at yarrowdigital.com. I will link to that in the show notes as well. And if this sounds helpful to you, then I hope to see you there. The Embodied Business Community is opening again on April 12th. And this is going to be the last time I'm offering it at this pricing. Um, it will open again in late autumn, but it will be a little bit different then. So if you want to lock that price in for, for the years to come for as long as you want to be part of it, then do get on the wait list and then you'll be the first to hear and you can sign up if you wish, on April 12th. Okay, let's get into the subject for today. So there's two things that got me really thinking about perfectionism and people-pleasing. And the first thing is going through all my old blog posts and then also the other thing is updating my courses. And I went through all my blog posts because I had this like fuzzy feeling that there were a lot of broken links, that maybe some things that I said I don't feel are true for me anymore, that maybe I just want to get a sense of the body of work that I've created in the past six years. And so, oh my gosh, I went all the way back into my archive. Between the blog post um, and the podcast episodes, I had over 90 pieces of content in there. I deleted a lot of that because it was just outdated and no longer relevant to what I'm sharing. Um, but most of the things I just tweaked or updated a little bit. And 
I mean, that was it was so interesting to really touch every piece and to think about whether it still gives me joy. A, a digital decluttering, if you will, and also to reconnect with this past voice of mine. And I'm not gonna lie, there was a lot of awkwardness there. And what I noticed was that I felt really awkward or it felt really like not me, the more self-conscious I was. So in some of those older pieces that I wrote in 2015, for example, I really was trying so hard to be funny and I was writing about tech and I wanted it to feel really like fun and accessible, but I was just trying too hard. And I, yeah, it was just, it sounded weird at times, you know, and I wonder now how that came across at the time. And it's good that I'll never know. And it's also not that important. I think we, we maybe also just take this kind of stuff too serious sometimes. But anyway, I updated those things and that really made me think about how hard it is to start out sometimes and to find your voice and to really express yourself in your own unique way without hearing other people's voices or expectations. And I think that is actually the thing that makes it more difficult, right? And so how can we let go of this need to please everyone, to be funny all the time and to create things that will be for everyone which is just impossible so how can we really let ourselves off the hook there and then the other thing that got me thinking about this is um, the fact that I finally updated my two courses one is called the DIY web design adventure and the other one is called um, branding with canva and I first recorded those courses I think four and a half years ago and they were pretty different at the time and that makes sense because the technology and trends and just my approaches have changed over the years but essentially they are the same and they are were made for the reason that is still feeling so present to me is that I wanted to help people who couldn't or didn't want to work with me one-on-one -on -one. I'm kind of offering a way to to learn that kind of stuff in a way that's really fun and accessible and I really think that WordPress you know WordPress is tricky but it can be fun and you can teach yourself if you want to and there's beauty in, and ease in hiring someone like me for sure but if that's not in your budget right now that doesn't mean that you can't have a beautiful website and so what happened about two years ago is that I had this like sense that the course was a little bit outdated I wanted to update something um, especially around DV which is the theme that I'm using there had been many changes with that piece of software and I just felt like the, the course was a little bit behind and actually looking back now that really didn't mean it was a bad course or that I had to be taken off the market completely it actually just meant that I should have spent two days updating it and then releasing it back into the world but I took it down completely and I took a break and then there was other stuff going on in my life you know how these things work and then I kind of felt disconnected from the course and I, I didn't really have a sense of what actually I needed to do and I was always fully booked with client work, which I was so grateful for, I still am. Um, and so the story that I made up in my head was, oh, I can't afford to take a break from client work to update this course and relaunch it because I should just be grateful that I'm always fully booked with one-on-one -on -one work. And the embodied business community is always selling out. And so, you know, I already have all these beautiful things in my business. Why? why would I be greedy and like also want to have this really good course so silly right like when you when you say it out loud it, <laughs> it's ridiculous but that's the story that I was holding for a while and then uh, like I said I broke my leg at the beginning of the year and I was looking into spring and the, the month ahead and I was thinking about you know taking time to integrate what was happening in the pandemic and this really giving myself space to heal my leg learning to walk again in the spring and summer and also just growing older and really loving this gentle pace I now have in my life and in not in any way wanting to step away from web design work and doing that one-on-one -on -one for people because it's still absolutely what I love but also just really seeing the value and being able to offer this course in a way that's much more affordable than working with me one-on-one -on -one. um and finally, just kind of like, <laughs> you know, calling myself out on my own bullshit. So anyway, so the past two weeks, I've been re-recording this course. 
and also looking at the course in the way it was and thinking about how it's different and how my approach has changed I was just like wow you know that was so bloody unnecessary for me to have that off the market for two years I could have made some money selling the course I could have helped some people make their website it would have just been fun you know it would have been good for everyone really but there we go there we are so do you have a project like that where you have been making it unnecessarily hard for yourself where maybe in some way you haven't shared something that you could have easily or at least you know maybe not easily but you could have shared that in a playful and creative way if you had made it a priority and is now the time maybe so if you want to ride this wave of spring energy with me, have a think about what this project is for you that maybe you've been holding back on and can you let that go, you know, can you let the hesitation go? And I think there's so much more to dig out here around like where is the self-consciousness really coming from or why do we think that we all only get to offer something when it's really perfect and really up to date and really the lightest thing and also very unique and different from what everyone else is doing and here's the thing there's lots of people who have web design courses and they're all different I know that right it's not that I really think in my heart of hearts that I had to create something that's totally unique people will buy the course because they resonate with the way I do things and maybe they know me and trust me and they listen to the podcast for a while and so I don't actually have to overthink that and think about how it's different from someone else's or making it better or all that kind of stuff. And I think that just applies to so many things in business. And we really have to ask ourselves, like, who is missing out when we're not doing our thing? So if it feels selfish to think about how can I make it easier for myself? How can you make it easier for yourself? Then, you know, if that question isn't accessible right now, can you ask yourself, who's missing out when I'm not doing my thing? And maybe also, how do you relate to the humanness of other people that you support? So whether you listen to them on a podcast or you follow them on social media or you buy their thing or you work with them in some way, isn't that maybe also because they are being human and not perfect? And are they really trying to please everyone? Or have they just said, you know what, I want to work with the kind of person that is like you and that is not everyone and that spoke to you in some way, right? So yeah, the last question I want to offer maybe for your journal if you like is how can you meet yourself where you are and how can you grow your capacity for expression and courage a little bit every week? Thank you for, for listening. It's been so nice to riff on this stuff with you and I hope it's been helpful or at least has been stirring up some stuff for you.